Hi, welcome back to Art Demonstration at Home. Um, this is my second video for doing an art demonstration that you can follow along or just watch and then go ahead and do your own assignment, just like we were in art class. I give you a demonstration, you watch it, and then you do your own thing. Uh, first, I just wanna say thank you to everybody who uh, was able to do the ABC design and uh, submitted it to me just, just for fun, just so I could see it, or you uploaded it into the Facebook or into Google Classroom or emailed it, any of those ways. It's just great to see that you're doing it. You guys are doing a fabulous job. You do it whenever you wanna do it. Um, maybe even do it again in a completely different way. It'll never be the same thing twice. So uh, today we're gonna be doing a Mother's Day painting. Mother's Day is May 10th, so we have a couple weeks. And uh, so even if you don't even watch this video until for another week, you'll still have plenty of time to do a painting for your mom or possibly a grandmother uh, or friend, all right? So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit with this, bring it in. So this is a painting done in acrylic paint, um, done with, uh, a, or I'm sorry, done with acrylic paint and outlined with black. And it's kind of done in the style of like Vincent Van Gogh. So a lot of little short brush strokes and brush strokes over to the top of my background here and little brush strokes into my, uh, my table. That's just a style I just was playing with. Yours can be completely different. Uh, but what we will do is we're gonna do a bouquet of flowers. This is a bunch of flowers. Maybe you're just gonna do a couple, two or three maybe. Um, you're gonna do it in a vase. And then we're gonna set the vase on a table. And you'll color in a background. Maybe it'll just be a simple color. Maybe you'll do a pattern. Same with your table. Maybe it'll be plain or maybe you'll do a pattern. It's up to you. This is your painting for your mom. This is just one way to do it. So what I started with when to do this is with this vase right here I copied. You might have some vases at home uh, that you wanna look at to kind of inspire you, um, but you don't have to go exactly with what you find. Notice that this vase is very tall and I really didn't have that much room in my painting. I didn't want this tall of a vase. So I kind of like cut it off and made it shorter. So you might need to do that too for one of your vases. Also, this is quite red, which I love, uh, but I added in a lot more colors over top of it. So by the time I was done, you can see it's not quite as red. I am showing a darker side, a little shadow side and a little, little highlights brighter side, just like on my table, little highlights and darker side. So if you might wanna do a light and dark side, light and dark side, just to show light and shadow, but you don't have to. Um, so I started with this, but I made it a little shorter. You'll notice also, this is more narrow. I made mine a little bit wider, just to make it, just to kind of take up some space back there. So you can see how much I changed it. I used these silk flowers. These are tulips. Some are drooping, some are standing straight up. A lot of overlap, one flower in front of the other. Now this is a big bouquet with a lot of flowers. You don't have to do that many. I tried to do several, but not even as much as there. Notice also these are white. And I kind of played around with yellows and pinks and a little white, kind of playing with that. And notice my shapes are very loose, almost like teardrop style. So you can make yours how you'd like. Um, take a look around your house. Uh, see what, if you've got some vases to kind of inspire you. This is a beautiful shape, it's clear but it's a beautiful, nice curved shape. Um, so that would be kind of fun to do. But you don't have to do it clear. You can make it whatever color you want. Maybe your mom's favorite color. Maybe it's a nice big blue vase or something. Uh, maybe you don't want to do a vase. Maybe more of a pot. 
This is a little pot and it's got a little design on it. So you could do a design on your pot. So there's several different things that you can do. Um, I use, for reference too, these are tulips. They are not real, also silk. And notice that these are uh, what's called variegated. It has a white and a pink, and then the leaves. So maybe you have something like that at home. You can always go on the internet and pull out pictures of flowers that uh, can inspire you to do. All right, so let's look at some example drawings that I have and get you started. So I'm gonna turn this around, get it down to my drawing table here. There we go. Whoops, maybe too much. Get that tightened in there. All right, so um, I did some other examples for you guys. And these are not completed yet. As you can see, there's part of it is colored. These are, um, I just did four. One, two, three, four. I did four tulips here. You notice I did some overlap. This one is in front of this one. This one is in front of that one. So I've got some overlap right here. And then this guy's over here off by itself. So no overlap there. Also added in some leaves. You might wanna throw some leaves in yours as well. The vase I used, I just cut just out of my head. I didn't look at anything. If you turn it upside down, it kind of looks like a light bulb. <laughs> you could even draw it like that. Um, also, I did a smaller top, a little tighter area here. I put it on a round table. You see the curve. And I added a pattern to this one. Uh, obviously, it's checkerboard. So if you want to add a pattern, you could. You don't have to. It could be any pattern you want. This is just checkerboard. Um, for my background, you can see I added hearts. Just little hearts around there and dots. And I'll be coloring this background completely in and coloring my hearts a different color so they'll stand out. And then obviously finishing coloring the flowers. This was done on sketch paper and done in watercolor pencil. And then um, I just used a clean, wet brush and went over top of my colored pencil and it turns into a watercolor. If you happen to have these or you wanna get them, the key is not to paint over the whole thing like that. You have to paint one area at a time. So, it, or otherwise it'll just all blend together. Okay, so you paint it kind of like you're coloring one little section at a time. All right, uh, but you could do yours in colored pencil, crayon, paint, whatever you have, pastel. Here's another example, also done in the uh, watercolor pencil. Here I did, uh, I didn't do tulips. I did a different flowers. So you can pick whatever flower you like, or maybe it's your mom's favorite flower. These are what's called like cone plants, uh, or like a daisy. These also overlap, different colors, but similar. There's leaves. I did a simple background where I just did kind of wavy-ish, wavy back, wavy vertical lines and did little circles. And then when I wanted to color it, I have like light and dark, light and dark area. That's just a simple background. My vase, it's just a simple shape vase, but then I added pattern to it. Um, also, I did a checkerboard, but I did it in perspective, one point perspective. So to color that in, so completely different. So maybe you're gonna have, maybe just even do one big flower, but notice my flowers are pretty much taking up the top half of my picture and my vase and tables taking up the bottom half. So it's gonna be about like that for yours too. Same with this one, you notice the you notice between my hands. So like this bottom half is vase table, top half is all flower and greenery, okay? If you accidentally have your, your vase up too, too high, just draw it in pencil, draw light, erase, 
<laughs> bring it back down a little, okay? Uh, so if you first you want to decide what is your vase going to be and what kind of flowers, okay? So here's just some basic, basic shapes to get you started, get you thinking about flowers. So here's your basic tulip shape, right? The three points. I'm gonna grab another paper here to show you how to do that. So some of you are really, really good with flowers. Well, actually most of you as far as doing very detailed, but some of you are just like, I just want a simple. So remember this. You know, you just, uh, the simple three-point tulip, right? Curve. These make great tulips. Just a simple three points. You can show the back of the flower, too, by adding uh, some tulips in between. If you want to do that. You can always bring the sign down, bring the sign down, and show it like that as well. All right. So that's some ways to draw flowers. Uh, these tulips, tulips, daisies, they all have a pretty straight, a strong stem to them. Another flower design you might want to do is like a, a big old daisy. Draw a circle. Don't forget to add in all the fun little dots and seeds inside here. And then kind of like teardrop petals. These I'm just showing real big, a simple one, just so you can see. But remember, we're gonna try to do ours in a pot or a vase sitting on a table. This is just showing us so you can see up close. So kind of a teardrop shape flower. Um, here is similar, but this type where you have a smaller center with the dots on the inside there, get the seeds. Um, a smaller center and thinner petals, but more of them. That's another way, okay? Uh, I know a lot of people love to draw uh, flowers like this. You've got your center. You go ahead and you can do your Kind of like a sunflower, think about a sunflower. That's kind of more like the shape of what this one is. And then you do your pointy and curved petals all the way around. And then you draw petals in between them, in between them. And you can keep building that out. This is a nice shape though. Then you could go ahead and add your little lines here. And those make beautiful flowers as well. So those are some ideas. Uh, maybe your bouquet of flowers uh, has different flowers in there. Instead of just tulips, maybe there's some tulips in a, and a daisy. You could do a mix of flowers too. So we're gonna look at this real quick and I'm gonna let you get started. Here is a example where we have just three flowers, okay? But there's some interesting overlap. This one is in front of this one. And then this one is not, does not have any overlap. But it's kind of nice to overlap your flowers just for interest. Um, also the stems, this is the one in front. But I also have stems being overlapped. It means one stem is in front of the other. And here you can see, this was done with a, a pot as, as opposed to a vase. So maybe you wanna do a pot. Um, to do the table, I did a curve table. Here is a straight across table. Go edge to edge, okay? We're using the whole paper to draw our vase, our table, and our background. And don't be afraid, it's okay to have some flowers and leaves actually come off the paper, okay? So to do this one, and to get started, you wanna kinda of keep things in the center, and if you wanna even draw a light with your pencil, a little center line, just to kinda of help you keep your vase, your pot in the center, okay? Um, to do a curved table, 
Um, I'm gonna show you that in a minute, how to match it up. But to how I started this pot, is you notice almost, almost halfway, almost halfway. So I drew a curved line in the center. And then right underneath, following along with that same curved line, I did one underneath it. Just for my pot. I'm doing a big pot with a big lid or lip on the side here. And then I'm gonna pick, give yourself, I've got about two fingers worth here. From the bottom of my pot to the paper, depending on your paper size. This is a nine by 12 sketch paper. But I've got about two, two fingers here. Come straight down and I did a curved happy line that matched right underneath. So one, two, three. And then what I'm gonna do is I connect. So I connect the side and made the side. Now this is a little bit of a diagonal line. You might want yours to go vertical and that's fine. And then I added a pattern. You don't have to, you can have yours plain. I'm giving a little pattern in here. To draw the back of the pot, and again, you are actually drawing in pencil, okay? Um, you can go over your lines when you're done with a Sharpie or a marker if you'd like, uh, but don't draw in a Sharpie. I'm doing that just so you can see, but draw in a pencil, draw light so you can erase because you're gonna be doing a lot of erasing. To do the back, and I'm gonna do this in pencil, you're kind of doing the exact same curve, but instead of a happy curve, it's a frown curve to connect the back of the picture. So it's gonna look like this. So here, let me actually work on this. So I've got my happy curve line here, my happy curve line here, my happy curve line down here. And then I connect, connect. Probably should have shown you it like this, this way before. So it looks like that. Connect my two sides at the top. And then pencil-wise, I'm gonna do this in pencil to do the back. So it looks like we can see inside your pot. I'm just gonna draw it like that. So it's a curve line, curve line. I'm gonna be erasing a lot of that uh, because I'm gonna have my stems and flowers. But for right now, this is kind of what I have so far. So a curve line, match the same curve line. Same curve line, just, just a little shorter. And then I connect those and connect this. To do your, if you wanna do a curved table, you can make it as deep, you can make it up here, you can make it down here. I made mine a little lower. Um, I start from my pot or vase, if you're doing a vase, and go all the way out. So nice, just a gentle curve line. You can see it's not straight, it's curved. Now, how do you match it on that side? Here is a trick. Using my pencil, I measure. So, where is this line gonna be over on this side? Well, let me measure. So I'm gonna use the tip of my pencil and I'm gonna to touch to where it's touching my pot, okay? Then I'm gonna find the very bottom of my paper and I'm gonna mark that with my thumb. So it kind of looks like this. Okay, I've got my thumb there, the bottom of the paper and I'm touching right there. So I know, do you see it? I've got it marked. I'm gonna to come to the other side. You see how my thumb is touching? My, and I, you don't move your pencil. Keep it in the same hand and then mark it. Just put a little line there. Boop. All right, so I marked a line there. So I know it's gonna be exact, right? Now, what about on the side of the paper? Where is that? I gotta match it to this, so go back. 
put my point on my pencil right on my line, use my thumb, find the bottom of the paper, okay, so it's shorter. This, this is shorter than this, all right? At least it should be for a curve. And I'm gonna come to this side of the paper and mark it. I'm gonna mark it in Sharpie so you can see, but again, be doing this in pencil. So I would do this, do this, mark it. Just a little line, just a little line, just enough for you to see. And you, I think you can see that I did it darker. Now connect it. And remember, it's, it's not diagonal, it's not a straight line, it's a curve line. So I'm going to go from here and curve a little light curve to there. And now it's really, it starts and ends exactly like on that side. So that's how I have it nice and symmetrical table, okay? So now I have my table and my pot. I can add designs to that pot. I can add designs to that table cloth if I'd like. Maybe it's a table that is uh, wood. Maybe I'm gonna draw wood grain on it. That would be kind of cool. All right, to do my flowers, I'm gonna do the three flowers. The, the flower that is in the front, draw that one first, okay? So uh, for me, that would, was my uh, middle flower, kind of in the front. So again, I'm doing tulips. I can look at like a tulip shape here, draw something like that. Um, I was looking at these tulips and you can see that they kind of are wavy and kind of what's called scalloped around the side. And it's kind of an oval shape, okay? So that's what I was trying to copy from. So I'm gonna kind of do a nice wavy and kind of an oval shape, and a little wavy. And that's one of my petals. That's my first petal. Yours might look quite different. I'm gonna make the other petal on the right and kind of curve. We don't see the hole. What's behind there? I don't see the whole petal on mine, just curves into it. And that's me do the other side, a little wavy at the top here, and curve down. Okay, so that's my first flower. Now I'm gonna draw the flower behind it. So I've got, I'm gonna connect right there, nice curve, and a wavy at the top, and stop. All right, because this one's in front. Okay, so this is my building my second one. So that's kind of like my main petal. All right, and I'm gonna do the one on the side here. You can kind of see a little bit. And we're gonna show a little bit of the other side. And it's stopped. Oops, I'm sorry. So that's flower one, flower two. Uh, flower three has a teeny tiny bit of an overlap, not much. It's pretty much the whole thing showing, but there's some overlap, so that's the first petal. I notice how that it's not perfect, but it's fine, all right? And then I'm gonna do my second one, and my third petal. You can leave it like that, or I added a little petal in the back that you could see. Gives a little bit more dimension, okay? So there's my three petals, your flowers. Let's go ahead and add the stem. So this flower that's in the front, which for me is my middle one, might be different for you, but my middle one's gonna be the front one. I'm gonna add my stem. Um, you can make your stems completely straight up and down. I like to curve things a little bit. So mine's gonna be a little curvy and it's gonna come all the way down and stop. Can't see anymore. This is the back of my pot. This is the front, so it's got to stop. I'm gonna draw the line next to it, and that's gonna be the other side of my stem. So that's flower one. Uh, flower two doesn't have overlap. I'm gonna let this guy all the way down like this. One side of the stem and the other side of the stem. And again, I like curves. Maybe you want your straight, that's fine. This guy right here, completely behind the other two. So watch. Start, stop. Start, stop. Start, 
start, stop. So wherever it's going behind the other flower, you have to stop. Let's do the other side of that stem and same thing. Okay, um, let's go ahead before, don't draw the back of the pot yet. It's in pencil, but I haven't, I haven't committed to it yet. So let's add some leaves first. And again, I like wavy things, so. And then maybe show the inside of that leaf. And this leaf is really a big leaf. And it's gonna be coming from back there. And then I'm gonna throw in a little leaf that's gonna kinda flop down, because sometimes these leaves tend to do that. So now I wanna draw the back of the pot, but I wanna make sure I don't wanna draw all the way through because my flower stems and my leaves are in the front. The back of the pot, uh, it only shows where there's no leaf or no stem, okay? So I'm gonna go start at the edge, stop at the leaf. I got leaf, 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 stem. Ah, but here's some empty space from my back of my pot, draw it there. I've got a stem, I have stem. And then from this stem to the edge, I have my pot. All right, so if you have your pencil line drawn through your stems, you're gonna need to erase that, okay? I'm just gonna draw in some lines here so you can really see the back or the interior part of my pot. So you can see where is their pot and where is their a stem or leaf. Okay, so you can see that. And so this is good to go. Um, I have my flowers, I've done a little overlap, I've thrown in some leaves, I have a pot, You again, a pot or a vase and a table. So the final part of your drawing would be making a decision if you wanna add a pattern. You don't have to, it could just be color. Uh, do you want a pattern on your tablecloth? Maybe. So get that drawn in. And do you need a pattern or anything uh, for the background? Draw that in. Once you've established all that, either go over it with the black Sharpie or you can go over it with a marker or a crayon. It doesn't necessarily have to be black either. Uh, possibly you don't want to outline it at all um, and just have it in pencil and then color it how you'd like to do it, either with painting or uh, crayon or colored pencil. You can always add in black Sharpie later if you decide that it needs to be more defined, okay? Uh, so that's kind of artist choice for that. Before you color though, what you do want to make sure is that you take your eraser and any of your messy pencil lines that you have drawn, uh, especially like in the flowers or anywhere, you want to erase all that. You just want to have the outlines left. That way when you go to color, it'll be nice and clean. Okay, so go ahead and draw or, or uh, and then color how you'd like or paint. Um, then once it's dry, if you've painted, please, because your mom will really appreciate this, write your name, either in Sharpie, or if you're doing it in paint, you could even do it in paint, but write your name so it stands out, not too big, just artist signature, your name in the year. All right, so I do a fancy signature there, okay, and then I'd write 2020. That way your mom will know when you did it. Okay, she'd really appreciate that. You don't need your last name, but it's nice to have your first name in 2020. And that is it. So I hope you enjoyed this demonstration and can create a beautiful painting for your mom for Valentine's Day. Um, you can also even uh, do these as cards if you'd like. Make a card or a matching card to go with it. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have fun, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.